Well friends, what we have here is the Harbor Freight tubing roller. It comes with one inch, inch and a half, and two inch rollers for doing round tubing. Now I've successfully used it on material as small as half inch round bar and one inch square tubing. But for the current project I have, I need to roll some one by two rectangular tubing and I need to roll it the hard way. And if you don't know what the hard way is, you've got the one inch profile. If you roll it that way, that's the easy way. Then you have the two inch profile. If you roll it that way, that's what's called the hard way. Now these things are about $229 at Harbor Freight for the whole kit. And they have their drawbacks, but uh, I've had this one for many years and it's served me fairly well. I have had to modify it quite a bit. For instance, I had to drill out the set screws in the drive wheel and tap larger set screws in. But now for this current job, I need a whole new set of rollers. And here they are. Now these are from a company called Swag Off-Road. They're available on Amazon. I'll leave a link in doobly-doo below. And the main difference, aside from the shape of the roller, is the drive axle. This one has a key in it, and, and so does that roller have a key slot in it. The Harbor Freight drive wheel just has a set screw in the drive wheel and a corresponding flat spot on the drive axle. This is going to be a definite improvement. In fact, once I install this, uh, this key drive axle, I'm going to go back and cut keyways into all my Harbor Freight drive wheels. Now one of the modifications I did on the Harbor Freight unit was install these washers in the side to keep the rollers from going side to side. Because when they're allowed to move side to side, you get a pretty twisty roll, and I, I hated that. And this was my solution. I recommend, if you have one of these, I recommend you do this too. We'll start by knocking out the idling rollers. These bearings just pop right out. And on the swag off-road unit, they just pop right in. Now, now look at that. I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, that <laughs> that drive axle is loose, and it, all the set screws are tight. So I'm sure we're going to see a problem in there. So you have to install the key into the wheel, and then slide the axle in. And that was quite painless. I really don't like the small size of these set screws though. This was a problem I had with the Harbor Freight set screws, so I drilled them out to quarter 20 and retapped the holes because they just wouldn't get tight enough. Now, the fact of the matter is, I'm not digging that side play at all, but I'm going to go ahead and roll one and see how it works. Now this came with absolutely no instructions, but I do know from having watched several of these in use uh, that you need to lube these rollers. And I think this uh, white lithium should do just fine. Now there is a power drive attachment that you can buy. They don't call this the hard way for nothing. By the time I got to the ninth pass through this thing, it was getting really hard to do. And I'm only advancing that uh, downward screw about an eighth of a turn with each pass. Now you see, if I had a Milwaukee whole hog, I'd put it right on there and let her rip. At this point I'm thinking about making a bigger wheel. So I ended up getting a four foot long piece of one and one eighth inch solid steel bar and clamping it on with U-bolts. And that really gave me a mechanical advantage both with the leverage and with the weight of the bar. Right. 
So this is really tiring. I've been on this for two and a half hours and I am not where I wanted to be. The fact of the matter is I think it'd take less time if I put a motor on this thing. Okay, well I spent three hours on that and it's it's 47 degrees out here and I'm drenched in sweat. Anyway, I've got five more tubes to roll. I called the steel supply. They want $75 per tube to do it for me. So that'd be 400 bucks. Or I could invest another 300 into the power drive adapter for this thing and never have to worry about paying them again. Or I could just keep getting really great workouts. And I can tell you why it's so difficult. Because as the tube begins to curve, it begins to press out into the sides of the rollers. And that creates a lot of extra friction. And it's that friction is what I'm fighting. Well, I called up the fellows at Swag Off-Road and told them what a pain this was to do. And they said that if I install the Weldon Wing Kit, which moves these rollers out, it'll be a lot easier. And I gave some thought to just making the Weldon Wing Kit myself, since it is well within my capabilities. But it's only 90 bucks, and this is 30 bucks worth of steel. Considering it's already done, it would take me more than an hour to make these. And they probably wouldn't turn out as nice. It's worth 90 bucks. So I went ahead and I bought the kit. And they sent me a sticker, so I'll put that up on the wall too. I also decided to get the bottle jack adapter that replaces this screw with a 4-ton bottle jack and the electric drive adapter. Because I was able to get on Craigslist and find this for a hundred bucks. And what this is, is the electric pipe threader gadget. Now all four plates are the same, but you gotta remember that there are two left and two right sides. Anyway, you, uh, align, you align these ovals onto the plate, and there's this, there's, this, uh, there's this oval opening on the back here. So we'll just come in there and plug weld that, and then we'll do that to all the plates. And that's a decent looking plug weld if I do say so myself. They just said to use one clamp, but I'm using three because there's a little bit of warpage going on somewhere. And uh, just come in here and draw a bead along there to tie that to the main frame. So to prevent any other warping, I'm using the stitch welding method where we'll just come in and put several pretty lengthy tacks and then come back and tie those together. That should keep it from warping any worse. Okay, so there's the wing kit installed. Now we'll do the bottle jack conversion. So these pieces were laser cut and the first thing you got to do is break those apart and uh, sand off the sharp edges with the tabs that connect them together. So they say remove the top plate first. And those Allens were really stuck good. Now we install these side plate extensions. And replace the top plate. When you install these riser plates, make sure to put these, make sure to put this plate in. This is your new spring perch. And the spring perch will raise the bottle jack. Okay, now I just discovered that my, my pipe threader did not come with an essential tool. They want me to take the 20 millimeter pin out of the vise that came with this thing, and I did not get that. But I can use my original drive pin. Anyway, they've got these things jigsaw puzzled together. It's, it's a few pieces. I'm supposed to put them together, weld them up. And now they want that spindle plug welded in. They don't tell you anything about installing these springs. Okay, now we install the bottle jack. It just kind of sits in there.
and they give you a clamp to clamp it on to the uh, carrier. It's got a square head bolt on it. I just happen to have a square head ratchet wrench that is the appropriate size. So there we go. And then we got my 3D printed release valve. And they said to grease this. I recommend you actually do that because uh, I can tell it's not, uh, it's not as smooth as it should be. Now these guys make a special drive hub for this, but uh, apparently it didn't come in the kit that I bought. So what you've got to do is take the... Um, so what you've got to do is take the half inch die and expand it out so the drive axle will fit into it and then weld it on. Now they want you to weld that on to the new drive axle. One thing you're going to want to do here is clean that paint off so you get a nice good weld. I thought this was cast but I did a spark test on it. Apparently it's something you can weld to. Okay, so you see we've got this play here. I want to lay a shim in there to make sure that's centered. And what I'm going to use for that shim is this tin can. And here I've got a special dual pair of tin snips. This is made for going around a circle just like this can. So we'll cut a strip and we use that strip to shim our little socket there. If you decide to do this, do not use an aluminum can because the aluminum can will contaminate your weld. Alright. That's looking okay. They actually say to do this with the drive axle out of the unit, but I don't feel like disassembling it again. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do it with the axle in the unit, but make sure to ground as close to the weld as possible because you do not want the arc passing through your bearings. Now one difference between this and the original is you're going to have a lot more waste. On the original you only had this much waste at the end. Now with these extended wings, you're going to have that much, almost three times as much waste on the ends. And this thing is loud. So the idea of this bench is to follow the curve of this brick pad I have here, and it still needs a little more arc to it. So let's run it through the machine again. It said a lot of small passes is way better than one big heavy one. So I gave it eight or nine more passes and finally got the arc to the same curvature as my little brick pad over there. So that's one tube down and five more to go. This video is another in a very long list of examples that you never know what you're going to see on this channel. But if you click that notification bell, you'll get a notice every time I post something new. Well that took quite a bit of effort. Ordering the parts to do the mod delayed me by about a week, but I know that I'm going to save a lot more than a week by not having to hand roll. Plus, that three and a half hours I spent in the early part of the video, that put me down for three days. I was sore. Man. Anyway, now I can roll all the tubes for my bench, which is what this video was actually supposed to be, and it turned into modifying my Harbor Freight tube roller. But that's not such a bad thing because modifying tools and building tools is a lot of what this channel is about anyway. I asked the guys at Swag Off Road if they would give me an affiliate link so I could share some savings with you guys and they said they didn't do that. But they sent me a t-shirt and a hat so I gotta thank them for that. Anyway, I'll leave links to all the pieces I used in doobly do below. I'm happy to answer any questions. So please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Click up here to see my last video, click over here to see something of mine that YouTube thinks you'll like, and have a good one.